Hello everyone. I welcome all of you to the Career Cafe session. I am Pragya from the IF team and today we have Shreya with us to talk. Uh, she's a content writer and an entrepreneur and she will be talking to you about how to make the most of LinkedIn as a student. So over to you, over to you Shreya. Hello everyone. Um, can you hear me okay? Hi everyone. I'm Shreya. I'm a content writer. I'm a freelancer. So thank you so much for being here today um, for joining the session. And um, I'll be just talking about how you can make the most of your LinkedIn. And this is mainly for students, but even if you're a professional, even if you're someone who is looking for a job or who already has a job, even if you're a founder or a startup owner, this I'm sure this will definitely benefit you because I'll be sharing a lot of LinkedIn tips and tricks and how to make the most of your LinkedIn as whoever you may be. Um, so if that sounds good, Pragya, shall I begin? Yes, please. Okay, sounds good. Um, so just a, uh, a few things. Um, so first I'll be presenting, I'll be um, sharing a lot of uh, things about how I started with LinkedIn, about what you can do on LinkedIn and things like that. Um, you, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat option that's there on Zoom. And once the session is done, in the last few minutes, I'll be uh, going through the questions and answering uh, uh, some specific ones. So if that's all okay, I'll begin with the session. Um, so something about me first, um, I am a freelance content writer and my entire freelancing uh, journey began from LinkedIn. So I, uh, I had a LinkedIn account in April. So I started last in April sometime around 2018. I created a LinkedIn account and I didn't know what to do with it. I thought it's a normal resume platform. Um, so I, I updated my details and then I forgot all about it and it didn't really matter to me. Um, then something happened. Then I moved to Ireland for university and here at an event in college, I met the CEO of LinkedIn and there, um, and there that meeting, just meeting him and speaking to him, I shared a small story about that on my LinkedIn profile and, uh, you know, just met him, spoke to him, went home and, wrote a small thank you note and shared my experience. And that post in the next 24 hours, it went viral. So the next day I was in college and uh, my phone just kept buzzing nonstop, constantly. Um, and there was no particular reason for it to do that. So when I just, you know, took out my phone and I checked and there were like a thousand notifications from LinkedIn and I was so surprised. And then I checked the app out and it, Look that and it happened that my post had gone viral it had a lot of views a lot of comments a lot of likes and one main thing that happened from this was that a lot of people messaged me Shreya we liked how you wrote the content can you write for us as well and that's when I realized that LinkedIn is more than just a platform for putting up your resume or putting up your details LinkedIn is also about um, content creation it's a place where you can get clients it's a place where people don't care if you're a student i mean i'm a student but it's a place where people don't care if you're a student people don't care if you have a degree or not people don't care whether you have certifications or courses as long as you can do something as long as you can um you know as long as you can make the most of it by sharing the value you provide your experiences your expertise you're good to go so that's all it's about. And uh, that's how I started on LinkedIn. And based on my experiences, I want to help you make the most of LinkedIn. So once again, thank you so much for being here. And if you have any questions, just drop them in your chat box and uh, in the chat box and I'll answer them towards the end of the session. Um, so first I want to talk about what opportunities I got from LinkedIn. So I started with LinkedIn in October 2018. I started posting and this was a very, you know, I used to post once a week or so, just try to experiment, see what works for me. What do I want to write about? I didn't have a lot of ideas. I used to struggle to think about, think of, you know, things that people would actually want to uh, read on LinkedIn. And I'm sure many of you 
are actually wondering that you you know you want to create content you know you want to do something on linkedin but you're so stuck because you don't know what to write about like what can you possibly say that people on linkedin would like to read so that's what i'm here to help you with um so when i started i was just experimenting you know writing about different things writing about what i did in college writing about somebody who messaged me on linkedin what was the conversation like writing about any experience i had from my internships from my school life from anything any advice that i got from my professors uh from my family so there were just basic you know generic posts and um I thought that you know if my first post went viral it meant that I knew everything about LinkedIn I thought that okay if this went viral the next post can easily go viral too and after a few uh, posts I realized that I was totally wrong that's not how LinkedIn works that's not how anything works um something going viral is a chance of luck but you cannot create any content that will on purpose go viral so the best thing you can do is create a lot of content keep putting it out there and uh, just hope for the best that's it so i decided to have a proper routine set and i decided to actually write a lot on linkedin put out a few posts i was earlier it was just once a week so then i started putting out posts more um, frequently three times a week and it was really working out well i was starting to see engagement i was starting to see that people are um, you know liking what they're reading um and i understood you know what works on linkedin and what do people want to read people want to read stories so that's something uh, you know i i found through experimenting on linkedin and that's something i recommend you to do too um so what did i get from doing this you know what did i get from consistently posting on linkedin so one of the first things was a lot of opportunities so definitely as i mentioned the first post got me my client my very first four or five clients were from that one post so i realized that i can get clients i realized i could get other opportunities because even if not uh, somebody not a client something like you know people messaging me to do webinars for sessions for podcasts for interviews and that's also how i came here because uh, the team found me on linkedin and they approached me for a career cafe session so that's another opportunity i got through linkedin um some other opportunities include a lot of visibility so now uh, often times when i'm walking around in college people stop me and ask me if i'm the linkedin girl so i have that identity of being someone who uh, i mean who people know even without um even without actually having met in person so if they see they've seen my content and if they see me in person they ask me about it and that's just interesting because it builds a lot of network it builds a lot of actual community in in real life so i know that networking is a very buzzword and it's often thought that well what can networking do but for me networking has come up to my real life as well so many of my professors many of uh, you know the guests that we have at the events many of my fellow students they recognize me so that recognition and identity and that real life networking is also something you can get from linkedin so that's the opportunities that linkedin has be it in terms of experiences internships and jobs uh making money in terms of freelancing finding new clients or just be just getting to be known by professors and students and friends so linkedin has like this is the main you know value i get from linkedin every single day and i'm sure as students that you will also benefit a lot from these values um so i want to talk about um specifically how uh, how you can make the most of linkedin as a student so what are the main benefits and how do you get each benefit um before that there are some people messaging me that the audio is not being heard from my side so i just want to make sure you can all hear me and if you can't just please try to uh, work with your volume maybe just increase your volume and it should be fine okay um so i want to talk about first starting off as uh, as a student on linkedin so i'm going to share my screen i'm going to show you my linkedin profile and as per that i'm going to guide you step by step on how to create an impactful linkedin profile 
and I've gotten a few messages that my audio is fine. So that's great. Thank you for confirming. So I'll share my screen now and um, there might be some messages popping up. Please ignore them. But other than that, I'll share my screen. So I hope you can all see my screen. I'll just share my profile right now. So one of the most important elements of your profile is this section where you have your profile picture, this image, where you have your banner, which is in the background, and you have your headline, which is the one here. So a few key tips for each of these important elements. Profile picture, have a clear, good headshot where it's, it's professional, where you have a slight smile um, or smile a lot, it's okay. Just don't be too serious. You're a student, you, you're a person on the internet, it's fine, you can smile. Um, and make sure the lighting is clear, that your face is clearly seen. Because these things matter, because you know, when, I'm, when you're connecting with someone, when you're sending a request, you really do want to uh, you know, make a good first impression, put your best face forward, if I can say that. So make sure you have a good um, image. The next thing is the headline. I know many of you are students, so there is a big question like, you know, what do I put in my headline? Because I've seen um, so many students write student at college, like, you know, with the college name, student at college name, um, or write like, you know, engineering student at college name or second year engineering student at college name. That's an okay headline, but that doesn't really convey anything about you. You are a student, yes, that's right, but there's more to you than just being a student. You are also an individual who has skills, who has experience, who has expertise, who has a lot of value to offer. So when you're on a professional platform like LinkedIn, make sure you offer that value, make sure you talk about those skills that you have. So for me, I am, of course, I am a freelance writer, so I have included that I'm a copywriter and content writer. I'm also the LinkedIn campus editor, so I have included that. And I have included that I'm a student of literature and philosophy. So that's what I study in university. I study English literature and philosophy. So I have mentioned that. One more thing I have mentioned is my hashtag. So I have a personalized hashtag that I use like a signature at the end of all of my posts. So that's what I mentioned here. So that if somebody just only remembers my hashtag, they can go up to the search bar and they can type the hashtag and they can still find me because this is a keyword in the headline. So what I want you to do now, right now, I want you to think of a skill that you have, your most important skill that you have. You could be a graphic designer, you could be a speaker, you could be a web developer, you could be just an engine, like, you know, a robotics enthusiast. Whatever it is, whatever you are really, really passionate about, just write that down. Write it on your notepad, write it on your um, phone, wherever you want to. Just write it down quickly and I'll help you out with making, you, making a really good headline for you. So quickly write down one main skill that you have. It, again, it could be anything. It could be graphic designing. It could be public speaking. It could be, even if, you, if, you, it's, if it's not something that you really want to, like, you don't have to be a freelancer, of course. So if, you, if it's just your interest in something, like you're interested in baking, write about that. Baking enthusiast or, uh, you know, if you're interested in artificial intelligence, write about that. So three, four words that short and sweet that can be exactly... Um, what you like. So just mention that here. Second part, any role that you have in university. If you're a student, it's likely that you're part of some or the other uh, society, uh, student society in your university. Maybe you're the president of the drama club. Maybe, uh, maybe you are the, uh, you know, the manager in your um, engineering club. Maybe you are, you know, you, you help with promotions in your um, robotics club, whatever it may be, just if you have that role, quickly pick it up and make that, add that as a second part to your headline. So the first part is again, what you're interested in. And the second part is um, any role that you play in college. If that's done, great, you're on a good track. The third thing is now you mention that you're a student. So you've mentioned your skill, you've mentioned what role you play or what experience you have. The third thing you do, now you mention that you're a student. 
you can say if you if you haven't joined college yet and you're going to join later this year or something you can say incoming student at and say university name you can mention your course you can mention your college especially if you are at a college that everyone knows it's really good to mention it in your headline because it gives you that you know that brand value of the college and um, so quickly do that. What are you a student of? I'm an engineering student. Just write it down. Engineering student or um, student of literature, student of, um, I don't know, bi biology. Whatever you may do, just write that you're a student. And if you are creating content on LinkedIn, which I know you will, and because you really, really should, if you plan on creating content, once you think of a hashtag, just add that in the end over here. So that's it. That's your complete headline. And this is going to be very effective for you as a student. So you have just built the perfect headline where you talk about your, your skills, your experience, your uh, current education, that you're a student. It's very clear. And then you include your hashtag. So that's it. You have your headline ready. So that was a mini um, you know, step-by-step -step procedure on how to create a good headline. The next thing is for your profile banner. So when it comes to a banner, what is the purpose of a banner? The purpose of a banner is to immediately convey exactly what you do. I'll tell you a good trick to choosing a good banner now. Whatever you wrote here, the first thing that you wrote, just go online, Google it, check the images section, and whatever images you find, pick out your favorite one and use that as the banner. You don't have to use something that has your you know, your service is mentioned, you don't have to make it very fancy, you don't have to necessarily add text. If you don't have any banner right now, the simplest thing you can do is go online. I'll, maybe I'll just show it to you. So I'll type in this and I'll type in images. And you can pick out any image you like. So I'm just going to type in LinkedIn banner. So you can pick out any images you like, like these ones, which convey that you're a writer. Um, so anything that you find suitable, something like this, just pick them out. Doesn't have to be anything fancy and your banners, banner is ready. So you've got the most important three elements complete in just two minutes. You have your headline, your good profile picture and your banner. Next thing is the about section. And this is the most important section after the top one. What should you include here? I'm just going to give you a few tips. This is something you can create on your own. I'm just going to explain what you should include here. You should include your interests and hobbies. It doesn't have to be anything professional. If you like, if you like playing chess, that's fine. If you like playing badminton, add it in. If you like cooking, add it in. I have added in that I like baking cupcakes and organizing parties. So, you know, whatever you want, just throw it all in. Talk about your current job role, your current internship, your current um, you know, whatever currently you're doing or your current education. So add something about um, your course, maybe what modules are covered in your course, what um, if you've taken any major minor, include those things. And just so that every anybody who sees your profile knows exactly what field you are in. And third thing is to include a contact detail. So for me, I have written contact me for these services. For you, you can write uh, if you're looking for an internship, you can mention that. Um, and you can just, in the end of your about section, just write a simple line, contact me on and add your email ID or contact me or uh, message me on LinkedIn. So those are a few things so that people know exactly where they can contact you. So that's how you create the about section. The next parts are pretty straightforward. Um, the next parts are the experience, include all your internships, include everything that you've done uh, in terms of work. Even if you're a part of a student society, include that, like I've done here, like I've done here. Explain your roles, don't just upload uh, the names and the position, explain exactly what you did. Uh, make it into bullet points so that it's very much easier for anyone to read and understand. Keep it very simple, use bullet points, use short sentences that are easy to skim through. And the same for the education section. For the education section, once you've mentioned your university, mention everything you've done in your university. 
mention what modules you've taken, mention what societies you're a part of, what activities you've taken, what, um, what competitions you've been a part of, what other events have you participated in, everything. As a student, the most important section that actually shows what you have done and your experience and your skills is the education section. Because if someone likes your profile, they like your headline, they like your about section, they understand you're a student, next thing they're going to see is, okay, what are you doing in university? So make sure that is very clear cut as to what, um, you know, what skills and experiences you have in university. So include that. And finally, if there's any volunteer experience, I'm assuming that if you're in college, it's very likely you have volunteering experience. Do not neglect this section. This is also very important because volunteering shows others another, another side of you that's not present in all of these sections. These are more about skills and um, experience in terms of like, you know, professional experience. But when it comes to volunteering, it really shows what you're passionate about, what projects you're passionate about, what causes you're passionate about, and what, uh, you know, how much um, hard work are you willing to put in to actually create a difference in those concepts. So make sure um, you update the volunteering experience and again, add in all the details that you have to. Um, add your skills, add what skills you're good at, get endorsements from your friends, from your professors, get them to endorse you, do that and get your professors to recommend you. Your recommendation section is also very, very useful for you as a beginner. So get recommendations from your professors, from anybody you interned with, anybody you interned under. Um, get recommendations from your colleagues, from anybody who you have worked with and anybody who knows um, how you work. So just get some recommendations from them. Again, a very useful section. And of course, you're a student, which means you have so many things going on. You have a lot of events, you have a lot of, um, you know, competitions and opportunities to prove yourself. So if you have anything, if you have any blogging that you do, if you have any exam scores, test scores, any awards, any scholarships, add them all in. Complete your profile. That's the very first step to making the most of LinkedIn. A complete profile that people, as soon as they see, they will understand exactly what you do and exactly what, uh, what you're good at. So complete your profile, very important, please do this. So this was the part of um, how you can create a good profile. Now, if you have this, if you have done this and you know everything's in place, what, what next? Like, you know, what can you do next? That will really help you out. So here I wanna talk about something very specific and that is about how to use LinkedIn as a student and how to create content on LinkedIn while being a student. So as a student, you can use LinkedIn for two, two main reasons. One is to create content and second is to observe content. So what I mean by create content or observe content. First, first let me talk about observe, observing content. So you're a student, you're new to LinkedIn, you don't really know what's up, you don't know what to do. So what you do is you just go to your home tab and you read posts by people. You just read, you just see what are people writing about, you see what interests you, you see how they're writing, how their posts are working out. You do all of that. And, and at times you will find something on the other that you really like on, the, uh, on your profile and you'll click on it and you'll read it and you'll comment on it. And that engagement, that engagement that you do is very important because that engagement, that engagement is you getting involved in somebody else's content. Uh, that engagement is you thinking creatively, thinking independently and coming up with your opinions, your ideas and your thoughts about how to, um, you know, how to express yourself. So first thing is observe, just observe people, check out their profiles, check what they're doing, check how they're writing, check you know, what they are mentioning, what's working for them, what's not working for them, explore that. While observing, also connect with people. So if you, if, if I'm looking at your content and if I like your post, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a connection request and I will personalize the invite. So make sure if you're sending a connection request, make sure you personalize the invite. So what do you do? What do you do with that? So suppose I like your, uh, I like your post. 
and I send you a connection request and I add a small note to it. I say, hi, uh, I really liked this post of yours. I really agree with what you said and uh, I would love to connect. So what this does, when you say that I really liked your post and I would love to connect, it shows it shows you that I have read your post, that I have actually understood what you do, and that I want to connect with you for a reason because I liked what you wrote. So it really builds a personal touch and I think it's a very good way to send a connection request, especially to someone who is at a higher position, someone who may not accept all invitation requests, someone who, whose connection is very valuable to you, make sure you personalize those invitations and always try to talk about them in their post because in your note, because it shows that you have spent time understanding what they do, knowing them, and then send them the request. So personalize your invites. So that's one part of it. You observe people's content and then you send them a request. The next part of it is when you are creating content. So observing content is actually very helpful for creating content. I'll tell you why. So many times when you are reading somebody's post, suppose you're reading my post and suppose I've written about free, I've written about how to use LinkedIn as a student and you like it and you, and um, you say that I love these three tips. I would like to share one more tip. And then you write a small comment with that tip. Now you have this one original comment that you made, which means you have one original post that you wrote. So just copy that comment, create a new post, expand it, um, you know, add a few more lines, make it into a proper post and maybe tag the person, maybe say, Shreya asked in her post, like Shreya shared three tips. Here's one more of mine and then write it or you can just write it as your own post. And that's a really, really good idea to create content. So if you don't know what to do, just go on to your newsfeed over here on the home section and check other people's content out and whatever you like, just pick something up, comment there and think about it on your own and then create a new post from it. So that's very helpful. Okay, now I want to talk about specific content, not something that you create because, you, because you're observing someone else's, but something that you create um, by yourself. So I have this section of featured here, so you can add some of your best posts in the featured section. So they're on the top of the profile. So I'll be referring to these while talking now. So some examples are, this is my first post where I shared about uh, meeting the CEO of LinkedIn. This is a post about how I had won a start uh, funding for my startup. This was in college. Um, this was about meeting the prime minister of Ireland. This was again in college. This one was about a fitness coach who made a lot of money, 24 lakhs in 24 hours. And this was a short story. Um, I found him on Instagram and I, you know, his numbers were very visible based on you know, his page. So I just asked him if I could write down his story and he said, yes. So that's there. That's his story. And um, so there are a few more about, about LinkedIn. There are a few more like, why don't plagiarize on LinkedIn? There is something about an internship. So this particular one was where I was selected for the internship. But then when I called them later to ask about my letter and my joining date, they said that, no, you're not selected. I mean, after I got a confirmation, they said, you're not selected. So this was a post about that. Um, there's a post about my sister winning a few medals. There's a post about something on Instagram. There's a post about these absurd prices I am quoted, like I'm, I'm said to write a long article for like $2 or something, which is very absurd. So all these things are different aspects of my life that I'm just putting on out there. So I covered three main things here. One was about my college. So something like meeting some people in college or uh, winning a funding or any other events that I may have been to. So that's one, college. The second thing is that I'm sharing about is freelancing. So I'm sharing a lot about any messages I get, any freelancing opportunities, any, um, 
any client stories, any tips and tricks for freelancing. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is some general stories, stories about um, like the fitness instructor, like the story here, this is about how Nike's logo designer was actually paid $2. So the Nike logo was designed for $2 uh, per hour, sorry, $2 per hour. So it was like around $35 or something at that time total. So this is a more like a generic post and inspiring story that I wanted to share. So, so what is my, you know, what, what am I trying to say? I'm just trying to say that stories can come from anywhere and everywhere. You just have to make sure you're looking at them, right? You have to make sure that you're picking them up and just posting them. So keep aware, like be aware of things happening around you because everything can be turned into a good story. So anything that happens in college, anything that happens in your lectures, like include some notes from your lectures. That's fine. I've done that sometimes. I've picked up a theory that we studied in lectures and I've written a post about that. Go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and write anything uh, about any sports events that you attended or any even any party that you went to and you met someone influential or you met someone who said something that you know, really changed your life. Talk about those things. Um, so that's the college side. Again, personal, any personal experiences, um, any course you're doing online, what are you do, doing during the lockdown, any books you're reading, um, any advice that your parents gave you, uh, how did you make your career decision, how, why, did you decide, um, why did you decide to join this particular college? So all those kinds of things can make such wonderful stories and you don't even have to think a lot. You just have to think of what has already happened to you and create some posts from that. So it's as simple as that. No, you know, no waiting for the right job. Sharing your own life, your own stories. And it's as easy and as simple as that. So just do that. Don't think too much about it. Just put out your posts. And this is where the next question comes in but I'm too scared to put out posts. Like, what if I'm wrong? You know, I, I'm a student. What if I say something wrong and people start commenting uh, that I'm wrong or people start messaging me that I did something wrong? Would, how would I deal with that? And to that, I want to say that it's okay. Even if you make a mistake, it's fine. It's always okay to say, to thank someone who has corrected you and correct what, you, what mistake you made. Um, Chances are it's very likely you won't make a mistake. Just don't say anything you shouldn't. Be careful, be alert because you're putting out something uh, for the world to see. You're putting it out on a social media platform. So be very careful of what you put out and always back up your facts and uh, back up your numbers. Um, and just be confident in it because the main question, the main struggle and the main reason why people don't put out content is first that they're scared uh, that they don't have enough content, they don't know what to put out. And then the next thing is, wait, what if somebody judges me? So you need to stop thinking about that because there's nothing anyone can do. It's your content, it's your story, you put it out there and your job is done. So just post it, see how it goes and it's done and then just move on to the next piece. Don't be afraid. The only thing that can, that can happen from creating lots of good content is good things. You'll get a lot of opportunities. You will meet a lot of new people. You will network with, you know, so many people who can offer you internships, who can offer you jobs, who can offer you um, opportunities. Like they can invite you for interviews and podcasts like or webinars like this. So there's a lot of uh, benefits you can get from just being someone who's posting on LinkedIn. So definitely do that. Um, now I wanna share some small tips with you on actually making, the, making a good post. So now I've told you what post you should make, what you can write about. Next thing is, how do you make that post effective? So I'm going to refer to an article that I have on here. You can check it out on my uh, LinkedIn profile later on. You can check it out on, on my website as well. Um, so there's this article called five tips for amazing engagement on your LinkedIn posts. So I want to talk about these five tips quickly and, um, you know, guide you through them. So first is understand what engagement is. Engagement is everything right from likes, comments, reshares, messages that you get. So that's all engagement. 
the views are not engagement views are not something that people are engaging with views are just how many people have scrolled past it or seen it so how do you know if your engagement is good so a good engagement rate is around two percent so if you have a hundred views on your post you should have if you have um around say two likes or comments on your post so that's an average of two percent engagement if you have thousand people you should have at least 20 likes and comments on your post so don't obsess over it but this is just a vague uh, just just a broad idea i'm giving you as to how you can identify whether uh, identify whether you know your engagement is good or not that being said it's not that your first post is going to start doing very well everything takes time so commit yourself to the platform and be very very patient post frequently post two to three times a week uh, engage with other people and that's how your uh, linkedin will grow so be patient and be consistent with it so now that you've understood what um, what engagement is the next thing is focus on the content not the engagement it's good to know what the content uh, what the engagement is but what matters most is the content you have to remember that you cannot create viral content so don't think that I will only post when I have something so amazing to say that it goes viral because that's not how, how a post goes viral. A post goes viral when a lot of people engage with it because they really resonate with it. And you cannot decide for other people whether, you know, what resonates with them. Best you can do is create a lot of content and put it out there and hope that something works out well. So just, do not focus on the engagement, focus on the content. Third thing is add value. Don't just write, um, you know, three steps on like, you know, how to do this, how to do that. Um, people don't want to know that. And people want to get information from you that is valuable, that will help them in their life, that will help them in their career, in their professional life, in their student life something that really makes them feel good and something that has value for them. So provide that, provide value and share stories. So if I just share something about freelancing, just a general tip, like, okay, when a client approaches, you charge an advance payment. That's okay. That's normal. That's something that all other articles say. So what am I saying that's different? So when I say that you're supposed to charge an advance payment, I share my stories. I share the problems I had when I did not ask for advance payment. I share the problem. Uh, I share how my life improved when I started asking for advance payment. So these are short stories that I share that make the content personal and that make the content mine. So it's very important that you add that personal touch to your content and that you make it something that you do rather than something that's just, you know, easily available out there. Fourth thing, make your post appealing to the eyes. Like I said, for the profile section where you mention your job description, I mentioned that you should write it in bullet points so that it's easier to read. Same thing here. Um, use bullet points. Don't write big blobs of big paragraphs. Uh, avoid too many emojis. Don't use and clutter them up. Don't use too many hashtags. Use If you want to use hashtags, you can check out my post. I use them right at the bottom of uh, my post. So you can use them like that as well. And create a personalized hashtag. Don't forget that. And uh, don't tag too many people. I know it can be very interesting to tag a lot of people and hope that you know all, all of them will like and comment and will get a lot of engagement. But don't do that. Don't clutter your post. Don't tag irrelevant people. If you really want to tag someone, tag two to three people who actually know what you're talking about and who can actually engage with your content. So tag relevant people and don't clutter it up. And one more important thing, you don't need to add images or videos. Only text posts work very well. So don't stress about creating an image on Canva or shooting a video of yourself. Don't think too much about it. If you want to do that, of course you can. But that's not a compulsion. Even if you just write text posts, that's perfectly fine. No issues. And finally, consistency. This is a very, very important thing. You have to post regularly, consistently, and you have to post. If you post once a week and 
you do that only for a month and then give up that's like four posts in a month that's not good enough that's not something that you it does not give you the time to understand what your audience likes it does not give you time to understand what you like writing about so write write as much as possible don't write more than once a day but at least three times a week is good um just so you can keep posting you fall into that habit of creating content you figure out what works for you what your audience likes and then accordingly you create more content that will do even better so definitely um going for consistently posting content rather than um you know posting it here and there and um trying to make things work so put in the effort some bonus tips create your personalized hashtag mine is raya writes you can create your own and include it in your headline um text posts have really good engagement go in for that and engage with your own post don't forget to reply to comments if somebody is saying great post respond with a thank you if somebody is sharing their opinion respond to their comment of course ignore some it's okay to ignore uh, you know just some irrelevant ones but engage with people who appreciate your work and that will really go a long way so don't forget that and i cannot stress on this enough please be patient it takes a lot of time and effort to grow on any social media platform so please be patient and please um you know keep putting in the effort to make sure you get the benefits so this is something about the five main tips i had for linkedin engagement so this is how you create a good linkedin post and this is how you can um you know increase your engagement and make the most of your linkedin by getting more opportunities and getting um more benefits more um network and you know just getting more visibility from anybody on the platform so that's something i have for now and i think uh we can have a short q and a now so if you have any questions you can uh, drop them in the chat box and i'll stop sharing my screen and uh, i can answer them for you okay so i'm just going to um go through my the chats and you can ask any more questions you can just add them up there are a lot of uh, names so i have missed questions so if you have a, put your question before just please put it again okay can you share your best linkedin post So this one um you can check the featured section on my profile all of my uh, best linkedin posts are on there okay ma'am whom should i target as my connections being a freelance content writer okay so this is something that of course is a big question like how do i get more uh, people um uh, so there so as a content writer there is no, no one you specifically need to target if you have a broad if if you have a niche if you work if you write only for startups if you write only for um say blockchain if you write only for digital marketing so then you can look for um, you know decision makers in those fields and then contact them but otherwise you know everyone needs content so you don't need to stress too much about whom you're connecting with just keep putting out content make sure you're very clear that you're a content writer it should be clear on your profile and then anyone who approaches you knows that um you can help them, help them with content um so the connection target doesn't really matter i have a youtube channel where i upload voice over of poems i write should i add it to my profile i'm not an expert though um yes that wouldn't i mean that would be a good uh, option i think that if your poems are more relevant to a platform like linkedin it would be good so what work what would work on linkedin is something about say success and failure something about inspiration about motivation about giving it your best about working hard about uh you know making the most of everything around you so those kinds of poems definitely would do well on linkedin just make sure that the context is correct um samridhi is asking would you please review my profile 
you can dm me on linkedin or on instagram i'm there like any platform you can find me as shreya batar and you can dm me and i'll uh, you know just do a quick review of your profile how do i know which connections to add up avni is asking this just accept everyone i mean that's what i do because it doesn't really matter honestly so i tend to if i get an ex- uh, connection request i just accept them if there's an issue later on like you know if a person bothers you you can always like disconnect with them or whatever but it's okay to accept from everyone uh, my writing style is usually informal conversational kind would that work on a formal platform like linkedin yes uh s bora is asking this yes it would because uh anything that's conversational means it's easy to understand it's easy to read it's um something that uh is very narrative it's like a story so people really enjoy it again it's not the kind of you know the tone is fine if you're using an informal tone that's fine but again make the content relevant um you know you have to talk about something that people on linkedin uh, linkedin would benefit from so make sure your conversation is going around that topic so do that well how do we approach prospective clients on linkedin um cold messaging will do so you can just um either you can if you if you find a message that says hey we're looking for writers like you know on their feed um you can message them saying hi i saw your post that you're looking for writers and um so i i would like to write for you here's my sample or my portfolio so that's how you can do it for anybody who has mentioned that they're looking for writers if um uh, you are doing like a cold message it's the same as cold emailing you go and review their website or their social media and you message them hey checked it out and it's really good and these are my top 3 improvement points so if you would like to help uh if you would like me to help you out with that please let me know so that's how you can uh, go ahead with it so i'm just going to start picking questions now i just realized there are too many so we'll start picking a few uh what are the pictures in the background about the the pictures in my room if that's my room then those are just some paintings and that's a poster of vinita po okay those are taylor swift paintings i really like her um can you please tell me how you choose content anything anything that i like i write that's it anything that i want to share that's it how to start my own blogging create a basic uh, website like on a wix or wordpress to start with that how can you grow from that cross promote promote it on your linkedin promote it on your instagram facebook promote everywhere include it in your whatsapp story just put the link in your whatsapp story you you won't realize how many of your friends and family want to read your work so definitely put it on your whatsapp story it's very helpful while doing a job in a company how someone can company about this because you know that depends on your company uh accept requests of unknown people it works that's fine tips on managing a content calendar um create a spreadsheet an excel sheet with the themes and the caption and the posting date that's the easiest thing like don't um uh, don't think too much about it somebody has just written a nice message about the value of this webinar so thank you very much for that um how does a post get trending i don't know honestly i have not been able to figure it out i don't know just create content and if it engages like if it if it's good then it tends to get on trending i'm really not sure i'm sorry but just keep creating content and don't think about the trending thing it will follow okay how can i avoid negativity on linkedin very good question some people um will try to you know just say your stories are fake or you know you don't know what you're writing about or you don't have enough experience to write about this just ignore them it's fine you do you ignore them um because i mean who who cares just ignore them and uh, don't focus on it and if it's a construct uh, if it's a constructive comment that you can actually learn from um do learn from it and you know improve okay that that's a not Okay if anyone else has like I'll answer two more but if there's any other questions you can find me on Instagram or LinkedIn and please message me over there um most important thing to do on LinkedIn to be on LinkedIn to be like to have a profile and be active on LinkedIn don't just have a profile and forget it exists 
create content, post content, engage with other people. So all of that whole package is very important on LinkedIn. So do everything, be active on LinkedIn. How can I appear more professional and worthy while approaching clients? I may not have the experience. It's something that comes with time, it's okay. Appear more professional, meaning don't use SMS language, you know, type full sentences, be formal, be professional about things and be nice. It's okay to be nice. You can send a smiley here and there. I do that. It's fine. Just don't, don't stuff it up. Okay. I am so sorry that there's a lot of questions and I really want to answer all of them, uh, but I cannot because of this thing called time. Um, so if, I mean, uh, I think I have answered as many as possible. Um, Pragya, somebody is asking if they can get the recording for future reference. Uh, maybe you yeah. can let them know. Yeah, okay. So maybe you all can get this recording at some point. If not, I will upload it on my website in, in a few days. So that's shreyapata.com. A lot of promotion going on here, but there's a lot of valuable content. So everything I've said in this webinar is actually available on all of my social media platforms. So check them out. And you feel so little on LinkedIn, then you won't feel little on LinkedIn. Just start doing something. You won't feel that way. Forget your feelings. Just start doing something and you'll start feeling better. So yeah, that was a very fast paced Q&A. Um, so I'm glad. I mean, I, there's a lot of you here. So thank you so much for sitting throughout this one hour. That was great. And um, thank you for being here. Thanks for inviting me, Pragya yeah. and oh. Juvin. And uh, that's all. Now you can <laughs> Thank you so much, Shreya, for your precious time and giving us such an uh, insightful session. And I think it would be quite valuable for all the students and participants who have joined this today. And uh, thank you for all of you for joining in. So I think I'll see you guys in the next IF session, uh, Career Cafe. And for Sh as far as Shreya, you can, I think, get in touch with her. I think she's given you quite a lot of tips on that. So yeah. thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone.